Okay, this actually overlaps with all of the talks of the day, so it will be really fast. And uh, the idea is, so I'm gonna share one of the problems, I mean, all of this is great, but I'm gonna show you probably one of the short-term problems that we have right now, and why this um, was a um, universal runtime thingy could be nice. And actually, this really links with an idea that probably everyone has had uh, throughout <laughs> all of these years, which is like the idea of decomposable computation. So to have a network where we have a lot of devices and we can like flow kind of the Fluence Labs approach where you, you can, I mean, we transform the network into an operating system where we have memory, we, we have computation, and we can orchestrate executions throughout all of the network. So that's the idea behind this. But the short-term problem that we have, I, I'm, I don't know if uh, you were in the hierarchical consensus or, or HC talk, but one of the things that we are trying to do to scale Falcon is to deploy new subnets, right? So to, the same way that we have a load balancer and we balance the load over a, a backend, we will try to uh, spawn new subnets as we need them instead of like explicitly partitioning the state of, of Falcon. Another cool thing about this system is that we will be able to launch these light and configurable uh, blockchains with the consensus algorithm that better suits our needs, which means that uh, if I don't need security guarantees and I just want to go fast, I would be able to deploy a BFT over one of these subnetworks and still communicate with Filecoin. The problem, we, every time that someone wants to implement a consensus, so if, if we have different Filecoin clients, uh, one written in Go, one written in Rust, if someone wants to support a specific consensus algorithm, it needs to implement it in every single language, which means that uh, we will end up with a single node. While if we had this, um, this common runtime in all of the clients, we would have a way of having a single consensus protocol and be able to have different client implementations and run it. So this is the problem, and this can be applied, I think, to a lot. So this is our more short-term problem, but this can be applied in a lot of things, like lip 2 p for instance. We end up rewriting like the HT implementations, the, the, um, so the one in Rust cannot be used in Go, and uh, it may not e even be interoperable. So the idea is that um, if we have this, uh, like a really, light node with this runtime, we would be able to have protocols that can be implemented. But we can enter then the, the fact that if there are bugs, if there are vulnerabilities and so on, okay, but like from a perspective of end-to-end -end cycle of, of, of deploying a network, this would be really interesting. And uh, that's, so the motivation is, this is our problem, the motivation is like to be able to have like this script or this uh, lip 2 p host which handles all of the networking with a small runtime on top so that we can um, like attach all of these uh, protocols and like be pulling the protocols from the network. We may have different implementation of this crib or like this node, so we could have like a Rust implementation or a, or a um, um, Java implementation or whatever, but the, the idea is that we should have this target runtime where we can run all of the, the different behaviors that we want for our for our nodes. Um, Bruco mentioned like runtime upgrades, this would be great. The fact that we can ship really sh small nodes and we can configure the behaviors that we want for that node. Maybe like this is another thing that we are seeing, like one of the thing, so this protocol is being implemented in a fork of, of Lotus and then we are exploring the, the implementation. Now we are starting the implementation in, with Forest, right? So we have two clients that run HC. The problem is that Lotus is heavy, like really, really heavy with a lot of behaviors. And the only thing that we're interested in from Lotus is like syncing with, uh, we don't want storage and ceiling and all of this. We just want to sync with mainnet. And it would be great if we ha can have like a really shallow node and we say, okay, we want just to use the syncer, uh, the networking side of things, the DHC uh, and so on. So uh, yeah, it would be great if while we do this universal runtime, we can have uh, these things in, I mean, in the back of our heads. Uh, because, yeah, we, we transfer the network into a, an, an operating system and uh, we can, like, treat it as such. We could even come up with a programming language. I think that Aqua does kind of like this already, but, like, we have all of the abstractions of, that we have in a computer. So we have the memory, we have storage, we have uh, uh, potentially computation, so we could have a programming language that we're writing, and if it's content addressed even better, but like you could, could have a programming language that just runs in the network without having to worry or to bind it to a, to a device. And 
this is how I imagine this. I don't know if it makes sense, but like just uh, maybe a data store, a uh, lip 2 p core that handles all of the networking because there are certain things. Networking is hard and in WASM it has to be horrible. So, uh, and then like have a universal runtime where we attach, like we have the actual implementation of the different protocols. So an IPFS node, node could look something like this. I mean, IPL codex, uh, codes, BitSwap, and the Academia DHT. A uh, Filecoin node could be something like that with FVM also targeting runtime. So all of the protocols targeting runtime, the, the expected consensus of Filecoin, and so on. An HC node could be something like this, where I have like, I could point, I could have like here different consensus algorithms uh, and the HC specific uh, protocol, and they would be all operating in the same network. Uh, we could even have maybe an Ethereum node where it's just like targeting proof of work and like all of the all the syncing the syncing protocol specific for for Ethereum. So the idea is to have like these function addressable protocols. It's always the same idea, like the same way that we can like fetch um, and perform computations with that in the from the network and and execute them in your node. What if we could determine the behaviors of our nodes through CIDs. Like, I want to run these three protocols, I just mark the three CIDs and I will be running. An upgrade would be as simple as pointing another CID. I'm oversimplifying this. <laughs> it would be as simple, but I would love to see how it works <laughs> under the hood. And then there's another content that I really like from IPLD because we are saying always this, I'm fetching the something with a CID from somewhere. But I think that it would be really interesting as an additional model for this to have kind of like the link system that we have in IPLD Prime, some way of having, of allowing the user to choose the behavior of their loader because it's not the same. I mean, that's why I'm not linking it to IPFS because IPFS, you just go to IPFS, but you may want to like access through CID from your local device or load the protocol from Falcon. So, the idea is that I think this, it would be really interesting also to have these dynamic loaders, so or link systems or whatever that you can use to teach your node how to get the behaviors to execute the protocols over this this runtime. And uh, yeah, content addressable Aqua. I feel that uh, Aqua has a lot of of these ideas in it that we can reuse, but we really need content addressing <laughs> because I think that's the the missing piece in order to all, for all this to make, to make sense. And yeah, so I think that this is a call to action like Brooke. I mean, let's discuss it. Let's see if we can come up with a short-term plan. I don't know, what are the requirements, the models, what are the pieces that we can reuse? Because I feel that a lot of people are working on this and there are a lot of things that we can reuse. And that's it. Thank you. Questions? Can you maybe talk through um, when you sort of imagine like a hierarchical consensus network running with like some chain running at you know really fast speed and so on? Can you maybe talk through like the processing model? Even though it's like you're using a blockchain model for consensus, that doesn't mean that the jobs themselves have to be consensus. Could you maybe like elucidate the the like the utility of VMs like this and these kinds of models, but for um, then running many other kinds of jobs from within the, the blockchain processing model. Okay. Meaning like you're not running a smart contract, you're running consensus over, I don't know, like a machine learning model. Right. So uh, the, what if we, the idea is that you can run any consensus. BFT, state machine replication. So in the end we want to do state machine replication more than consensus and have some kind of verifiable proof that we can propagate somewhere else so that we trigger the, the state changes. If we have, I mean, this is something that we also, and we're exploring with the Lurk team, we could have a, a subnet without consensus. And having this runtime, I mean, we are playing a chess game, or, or we are in a chess tournament, and we trigger a new subnet for each chess game. There, we don't even need consensus. Like, maybe it's just verifiable computation of our moves, but then we wanna propagate a verifiable proof that we played the game and I was the winner so that we can um, update the, the scoreboard. So with AC, the only thing that we put, the put is the pipes for this. So the idea is that we are running in this tournament, we all do a subnet for the tournament, there we are running a consensus that it may be, I don't know, proof of work or a BFT. And then what we want is to create a new subnet. And the two things that we need is like, tuck the same semantics, which we have because that's what the AC protocol gives us, and then a runtime where we can do all of the verifications 
and, and like run and have this state machine replication. So I think that these could really help for this state machine replication. We don't care that much as about consensus, but it's most like state, state machine replication that is verifiable for the computation. So like theor theoretically, if you could just make a subnet that everyone just says like, okay, well, we really don't care. We're just gonna pass in a Boolean true and that's our consensus, but we'll still do operations. Um, like, so it's no like useful thing out of it and it's not like consensus per se, um, but it is using like that sort of model of like, yes, we go up above and we share state, but we're only sharing the state because we're pulling it down from um, the parents and we don't actually share any back, but we all agree that we're just not right. gonna do that. And like you have a framework to have incentives because to create the subnet, maybe I have to put some collateral. So um, do I, I don't to? know if I understood the question. <laughs> do you have to have incentive per se? Because um, it's you the incentive may want is like a good, like it's like everyone thinks is a public good or they're just a group of friends doing it for fun. I mean, yes, in the subnet for sure. Like you could choose to create a subnet just between your friends the same way that you deploy a to pin Mm -hmm. But right now, the thing is that you would you would have the means to communicate with the rest of the of the networks. So the interesting model. If you have a capability model, then do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. I just want to note, like beyond Falco and everything like that, this architecture lets you like it's like currently when people build apps on IPFS, like they'll have a bunch of stuff in the browser, um, uh, and the browser tends to fall over. Um, then the, like the other way to do this, you, you run something in the browser and you try to talk to a local node, but then like you have that really big barrier. This lets you just move a lot of heavy code like into a local node. Uh, so like even people like on a desktop, this is quite useful where like a like some form of daemon could basically be this runtime where it will run your IPFS related like services and libraries and whatever that your apps need. And then you can have most of the GUI code in the browser so that you can do all the connections or whatever you want inside this daemon. Uh, so like it's, this is a really good model for like Brave or anyone who wants to integrate it. Mm -hmm. And then there's another thing really interesting about this, I mean, hierarchical consensus and having this, that you can support partitions in the network. So we could be running this chess game locally and then have this proof that we verify it and propagate the proof once we get online again. So instead of having to run like a global system, we would be able to start like building an actual hierarchy of the kind of like the internet works today. Thank you for your talk. Uh, may I ask a question? Uh, what is the difference, uh, like, of this idea with Prince? Uh, sorry. Uh, what the, what is what are main differences uh, between e, like this idea and uh, Fluent Swaps, Fluent Protocol? Ah, okay. Uh, I think content addressability. <laughs> to be honest, like the ability. So so you kind of have everything there. You even have like this language to to propagate the jobs and and, but. Yeah, like data, so, so it's content addressability, what we were uh, discussing yesterday. Uh, even like the language, it's really open to be represented and, and have like as a first class primitive the CIDs so that it handles all of these loading and all of these things under the hood because you're doing already those calls to the network, right? But not by the CID, so you don't understand IPLD. Uh, I see. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, uh, so, so it's the content addressability part of things. So you, for instance, you specify jobs through a hash, but that's it. And mm -hmm. if you had jobs that were a CID and that these intermediate states that you're, so I don't know if I have your, no, I don't have that, that but in your VM, you had like the, in, the current state, the previous state, and then a few inputs. If these inputs were CIDs and the output was a CID is what Brooke mentioned, like you, you would have like this tapping, this tapping, you had, you already have it, but but we cannot refer to state that it's outside our our premises. So I think that's the the key. I don't know if this answers your question. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I got it. How would you refer, or when, for what would you refer to that state for minimization, or are there any other purposes? So to even to like the pause and resume model. Uh -huh. um, I mean, if something breaks. I could fetch the previous state, like say, hey, me, my node, they, uh, it ran out of, of, of. Okay, so work still in resuming this. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, the, the example that we put, I think that is really good. Like when you're in your phone, you see that you don't have the GPU to run the, the job. I could point to all of the work that I already did uh, through the CID and send it to my Fluence node, which is in the, uh, at home or in uh, AWS. And it's kind of like, I, and, 
I sometimes say that I really like BitSwap and, and GraphSync over HTTP because of this. Like you can reload from where you, I mean, from where you left. Right now, if the HTTP download fails, you have to st start from scratch in many cases. Uh, for this, uh, you can start from the block that, the latest block that you have. For the execution, I think it's the same concept. Like instead of having to do executions end to end, I would be able to resume them from where I left it. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you.